How is everyone doing? We are back. If you want to support the channel, consider hitting the like button and subscribing with notifications on. Because if you don't, well, this happens and it's not good. It's this time of the year again, when Samsung finalizes the design of the upcoming S flagship. A fresh leak from Ice Universe confirms that the appearance and configuration have been determined. So from now on we should expect some exciting talk about the Galaxy S11. But today let's take a look at what we already know about the upcoming smartphone. The design should be similar to the latest flagships from Samsung. According to rumors, there should be the hole punch display similar to the Galaxy Note 10, if not smaller. With slimmer bezels and a new aspect ratio according to an HTML5 test result of 20 by 9 compared to the 19 by 9 of the Galaxy S10 and Note 10, making it the tallest Samsung flagship yet, if you don't count the cover display of the Galaxy Fold, which has an aspect ratio of 21 by 9. The front camera of the S11 should be capable of improved facial recognition according to this leak from Max Weinbach. Not 3D facial recognition of course, because that would require a couple extra sensors which the phone doesn't have space for on its front anymore. Now let's talk processors. For the US and China we're expecting the upcoming Snapdragon 865 which should be based on the 7 nanometer AOV process and likely to be unveiled in December at Qualcomm's annual tech summit. The rest of the world should get the new Exynos. What is it gonna be called? Well, Max Weinbach found an Exynos 9830 in the One UI 2.0 beta files for the Galaxy S10. Some think 9830 could be a code name for Samsung's newly announced Exynos 990, while others think it's an entirely new thing. In my opinion, the 9830 is the Exynos 990 for two reasons. First, it's not the first time for code names to happen in files. The Exynos 980 had the code name 970. 630. And second, if you go to Samsung's official website about the 990, you will find it delivers up to 20% enhanced performance than its predecessor, Note number 3. Then if you scroll to the end of the page, you will find Note 3 saying, based on Samsung's internal test results compared to the Exynos 9820. And by the way, 9820 was the Exynos of the Galaxy S10, which basically means the 990 is the successor to the 9820. So what does the new 990 bring to the table? The thing I'm most most excited about is the new 120Hz display driver. You know, a higher refresh rate means smoother and more satisfying image transition and animations. Until now the Galaxy flagships are stuck at 60Hz, so it would be nice to see an upgrade maybe to 90Hz or so. I don't think it has to go all the way to 120Hz even if it can, the deciding factors will be the limits of the Snapdragon 865 because the US and international models have to perform in a similar manner, and battery life because the more you change the image on the display, the more power you draw. The next big thing is faster and more efficient RAM, LPDDR5, which means 30% more performance and efficiency than the LPDDR4 RAM. This extra performance will allow for better AI processing and maybe things like 8K video recording at 30fps for the first time on a smartphone. Speaking of AI, the new dual-core neural processing unit can perform 10 trillion operations per second. For reference, the iPhone 11 family can only do half this amount of operations per second with their A13 Bionic chips, which means the S11 will have smarter AI, hopefully with better applications. The chip has support for universal flash storage 3.0, which means much better read, write, and transfer speeds, which means an overall faster phone compared to the S10, which had UFS 2.1 even though its chip supported it. The Exynos 990 can also handle up to 108 megapixel cameras, which doesn't necessarily mean the S11 will have that, but we should see a nice camera upgrade at least, because a higher megapixel count doesn't necessarily mean a better camera. And coupled with the Exynos Modem 5123, which is also based on 7 nanometer process, we should have super fast 5G speeds and improved 4G speeds. Things are looking good with the S11 so far, and since the device has been finalized, we should expect our usual cycle of leaks pretty soon, so consider subscribing with all notifications if you want to stay up to date. Otherwise, you don't get notified and my work goes unseen, which isn't really healthy for the channel. But you know what's healthy? The thumbs up button. It tells YouTube the video should be recommended to the next group of people, along with you watching till the end. You are? Thanks a ton, I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time.